So, to introduce the first speaker, I'll do it in English to avoid all confusions. Um, he is Danish, um, not English, but that's okay. Michael is a married man and a father or two and has a background in sales. Um, Mike, Michael has now quit the old life and is now a full-time animal rights activist working to raise awareness about what we do to animals, uh, to nature and to planet and to ourselves. Um, together with Henrik, who is also here and will be speaking tomorrow, sitting right there, uh, they founded a Vegana Patia, um, or the Vegan Party, in order to try and go directly to policymakers to make the changes directly. Um, Vigana Patia is on track to join the 2023 elections in Denmark, and both the representatives have just traveled 13 hours from uh, Denmark after arranging a concert um, with talks and workshops, and they both arrived after midnight. So that talks a lot about their dedication to this cause. So, without further ado, please welcome to the stage, Michael Momberg. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm Michael Munberg. I founded, together with Henrik, I founded the Danish vegan party, Veganerpartiet. And I would like to tell you guys why. So the question is, but why a vegan party? So let's dive into it. First of all, I know you've all been thinking about it. The name. Why call it the V word? Come on. This party should have been named the Green Party, right? No, the Environmental Party. No, 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 the Climate Party. Um, maybe we could have gone for the Party for Animals? Maybe it's a bit too far? No, 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 no. Guys, if you want to start a vegan party, you've got to name it the Vegan Party. And you know why? Because it is a vegan party. So, stop talking about the name. The name is what it is, okay? And the name is really important because it signals what it is. We're not hiding be behind a color. We're not hiding behind one kind of catastrophe. We're not hiding at all, basically. We're just naming it what it is. We are Vigena Patil. Thank you, goodbye. So, what is the Danish Vegan Party? Well, basically, it is two ugly idiots. Um, sometimes we look really stupid. Sometimes we just look ugly and tired. Sometimes we do stupid stuff. But you know what? By showing who you are, what you stand for, showing your, uh, your dreams, your aspirations, your emotions, suddenly people will stand behind you and they will actually start fighting for the same idea that you have. This picture is from our first uh, general assembly. So you know when you have a party, a party is actually just like a name. It doesn't really mean anything. You don't register a party somewhere. Well, you do register the name, but what you do is you create an association behind the party. And when you have an association, you have a board and you have all these legal stuff, things that you have to do. And this was from our first general assembly. I think we were 60 people or so. Um, a full day of talks and discussions and uh, decisions to be made. Awesome day. Some people left here because it was at the end of the day. But this was the first time that I really realized that, well, two ugly, stupid idiots could actually create some kind of a movement in a country like Denmark. So, what is Veganerpartiet? First of all, we do have a board. So, when you are an association, you, you, you need to have a board. The board in Veganerpartiet is seven people. Uh, three of us are here and one of the, I don't know what you call it, suppliants? What do you call it? What's the name of a, an assistant to the board or something? Whatever. Um, so, the board takes care of strategy, PR, and HR, a couple of other things. Um, so, that's the, sort of the core of the party. Um, in addition to the board, we have what we call the active uh, people, the, yeah, we just call it the active group. And that is about 20 people who work, like, not full-time, but do spend some time every week on running this party. And um, 
we do have three areas that we focus on. So one of them is animal rights, one of them is environmental and climate, and one of them is health. And within, within these three areas, we have five things that we need to work on. We can do additional stuff, sure, but we need to work on these five things that you see over here. So one of them is networking. When you are a political party, when you want to gain influence, you need to network, you need to speak to people, you need to engage. And luckily we have Henrik standing here in the middle making a lot of videos. And we buy so much credit from this because we make a lot of videos for other people. We make their campaign videos, we make their commercials when they make a vegan cook cooking book. We make a lot of videos for other people and in that way they owe us a favor. <laughs> and the best thing you can get from someone is that they owe you a favor because over time, you know, when you have something in the bank, the interest grows and grows and grows, and then you can get an even bigger favor back from them. Excellent. So that's one thing. We, we need to do a lot of networking. Another thing is we need to do a lot of communication. Communi by communication, I mean stuff like this. Uh, public speeches, going to schools, going to um, like the Rotary Club. We've done a speech there. Uh, Go everywhere we can, where we are, we are invited, maybe not invited, and have uh, talks and communication speeches, stuff like that. Another thing we need to do within each of these uh, three areas is to create some kind of a policy. We need to be able to tell what it is that we want to achieve. Um, we are not very good at that, but um, that's one of the things that we are uh, gradually improving. Um, we need to be able to tell what will happen to us, to the animals, to climate, to everything, if we, for example, stop breeding pigs in Denmark. So we need to be able to tell what will, will, will happen and how we will get there. We need to do activism as well, because in Denmark, I think we are 0.35% vegans, and we need more. So activism is not only changing people from being carnists or meat eaters or non-vegans, whatever we call them. It's also about just raising awareness that we are here. We are ordinary people. We just don't do a certain thing, which is like, it should be a non-issue, right? It's like, I don't wear yellow t-shirts. Okay, doesn't bother me. I don't eat animals, fine, doesn't bother me. But the reality is, if you say to someone, I don't eat animals, you're a freak, you're an extremist, you're an idiot, something like that. So we need to do activism all the time to normalize what it is to be a vegan. And finally, we need a lot of publicity. We need to be in the media every week. We need good stories, we need bad stories, we need any story, because whatever story it is, it gives us airtime. So whether it is this um, great concert we had um, the day before yesterday, which gave us some, some airtime to talk about the concert, why a vegan concert, whether it is um, oh, back in the old days, uh, a year ago we had a, um, we just posted a video. It was a talking video about why you shouldn't eat meat. And we, we um, in the, in the post description, we wrote a comparison, well, not really a comparison, but the question. So, <clears throat> when you have, I don't remember all three of them, but one of them was, when you eat meat, do you agree that there is a victim? If there is someone being a pedophile, do you agree that there is a victim? You know what happened? Nobody talked about the meat thing. Newsflash, breaking, vegans compare meat eaters to pedophiles. So, we've had our good stories, we've had our bad stories. Stuff like that happens, right? But the thing is, all bad pu publicity comes with the, with, the, um, with the chance to talk about who you are and what you're trying to achieve. And yeah, we're still here for that story, but uh, that's how it goes when you, we have a saying in Denmark, when you stick out your nose, you will get hurt. And, and that, that's what we do all the time. So good stories, bad stories, all that stuff. 
So we also have party members. These are paying party members. We are around 200. They all pay just over 200 crowns every uh, year, which means from these guys we get 40,000 Danish crowns. And that is a huge contribution to the party because we use Dropbox, we use um, a site called Videoblocks to download small videos for our video con content. We use um, MailChimp for registration of emails. All these services cost money. And this, this really helps with paying just you know, the, the ongoing bills. In addition, we do get a lot of feedback from these guys because they, they've bought a share in the party. So they tell us, hmm, I don't think that this is very good. I think this is awesome. I think you should change this. Of course, we don't just do whatever they want, but we react to it, we listen to it. And also they can vote at our board meetings uh, or the general assembly. Um, so when we, when we have a discussion about something um, yeah, really important to the party, our strategy or whatever, they have the chance to vote about that. And to give them something specific, we give them some inside information. So we send them a newsletter just for these members. We have a Facebook group just for these members. So they will feel a little bit closer to us than this group here, who are the supporters. Um, we have a Facebook group, group called Veganerpartiet Støtter, which is the supporters of the vegan party. There are 1,200 people plus in that group, and they basically help us with the cause. Now, what is the cause? The cause is to change the future of Denmark for humans and, of course, for animals and the environment. So how can they help? Um, we are a very Facebook-intensive uh, party, which means that we use Facebook a lot. That is sort of our main channel to, uh, to reach our audience. And one of the things these supporters can help with is to share one of our videos. We know that when nobody shares a video, it'll be seen by a couple of thousand people. And then for everybody who shares the video, you can add 100 or 200 additional views to a video. And if it's shared 100 times, maybe it'll reach 10,000, 15,000 views. So knowing that this group of supporters is 1,200 people, well, if the video has been watched by 1,200 people, then it's mostly just been watched by our supporters. And they already know the story, they all agree and all that stuff. So by them sharing the videos, we'll reach a much broader audience. We do have one video that went, went really viral in the beginning. Um, it was the, um, we call him the, the Minister of Bacon, but uh, he has some other fancy title. Anyways, Henrik approached him and said, so what do you think about all the mistreatment of animals? And the only thing he could reply was, I love bacon. And that video went absolutely viral. I think on our page it has 350,000 views, on other uh, pages where it was copied to, it has uh, the same over there. So that basically kicked off the, the, the vegan party. Um, one thing that is very important about the uh, vegan party is that we are activists. We are not really politicians. We might become politicians at some point, but we are not at this stage. So the difference between uh, the vegan party and other uh, traditional political parties is uh, in 2023, we have the next election in Denmark. So we have that every four years. It'll be in 2023 next time. And if you're a traditional party, you'll be really concerned about that. So let's say you're not in government. So this is the date that matters, okay? And every year you have to look at, your, um, at the ratings and you have to improve your ratings all the time. Everything is about improving your ratings because you want to get into parliament when there is an election. That is all that matters. Next year you have to look at your ratings, you have to work to improve your ratings. And you can do that in many ways. Do speeches like I do, do a lot of, I wouldn't say activism, but do a lot of um, uh, 
publicity, uh, media stunts, whatever. Do a lot of work. I'm not saying these guys don't work, but it's all about the ratings. Next year again, what are the ratings? Are we prepared for this election? What can we do to improve our own ratings? What can we do to degrade the opponent's ratings? So what are we doing in the vegan party? Well, first of all, we work every day for the animals. Thank you. And then we do a lot of other stuff as well. So one of the things is doing speeches like I do here today, because we need ratings as well at some point, right? But we go out into farms, we document what happens to the animals, we try to get into media, we do protests, we do demonstrations. Um, I myself is an organizer in Cube of Truth. Do you know what that is? Anonymous for the Voiceless? Okay. So we are activists. And at some point we have to look at these ratings because, yeah, in 2023 there is an election and we want to get into parliament as well. But first, we want to change the future of Denmark and we can do that one day at a time. Because we don't want a vegan world in 2023. We want a vegan world today, tomorrow, or maybe the day after, but no later than that. So we have to work every day to save the animals, and we do that by talking about what is going on, what is happening, how we treat them, how it's affecting climate, how it's affecting our own health, the whole story. You know that, right? So that is a major difference between the vegan party and all other parties. And one thing that I would like to say here is, I don't really care about that election date. Because my goal is that all the other parties up there will have gone vegan or will have introduced vegan politics into their own policies before 2023. So that when we get to this election, we will be saying exactly the same as all the other parties and nobody will vote us in. And then we can go home and we can relax and it'll all be over. I can go back to my old job, which was kind of okay, but yeah, maybe I'll have a vacation, something like that. That would be awesome. I don't want to be a politician. I do think that I have to but I don't really want to. So, that is one of the major differences between an ordinary political party and an activist political party. So, why vegan politics? Does it even match? Can you do vegan politics? So, let's try. If we take some problem and put it through some of these uh, political ideologies like liberalism, conservatism, socialism, veganism, is that a political ideology? I don't know, let's try. We'll come out with some kind of a solution, right? All of these dis different political ideologies produce a different solution. The problem is the same. They might view it in, in a different way and they, uh, they work on it in a different way and there will be a different solution. So let's try. Climate change. What will happen if we put that through these four different uh, ideologies? So first of all, liberalism. I, myself and I, so they will say climate change, no problem. First of all, we have a market and the market will correct everything. Have you heard about the market with a big capital M? It will correct everything eventually, but at that time I think it will be a little bit too late. Because at that time we will have been way past um, uh, peak oil, we will have used up all of Earth's resources, we might not be able to live on planet Earth anymore, but yeah, then, then the market will correct. Sure. Uh, another thing I hear from, from liberalists is, um, hey, you know what? Next year, some fantastic new technology will come out. It'll revolutionize our energy production. It'll revolutionize our food production. It'll revolutionize whatever problem we have. Somebody in a basement somewhere is working on a solution and that solution will solve the problem. Because again, the market, if there is a, if there is an, a, a void in the market, a hole, somebody will fill it out. One thing I think is a very weak thing about liberalism is it's always about a new product or a new thing that you can, um, that you can make a profit on. 
So it's all about profit. And when you need a profit, you need, you need resources. And resources, where do they come from? Basically from nature, right? Or from, from, from the ground or by exploding a mountain and digging out stuff. So we need resources all the time. Let's look at another one, conservatism. First of all, denial. Climate change doesn't exist. <clears throat> End of story, no. Some conservatists do believe that there is something called uh, climate change, or at least they will, they will agree to talk about it. And most likely they will say the same. Yeah, no problem, we'll invent uh, more diesel efficient cars, uh, more efficient uh, airplanes, more efficient food, pr food production, or something like that. <coughs> Sorry. Now, one problem with new technology is, first of all, at what point in history of humankind was there the most technology? Can you answer that question? At what point in our history was there most technology on planet Earth? Exactly. The, the answer over here is now. So, if we have the most technology right now, and we have the biggest problems right now, I'm not saying that these are exactly, um, uh, they, they, that there is a match that technology cr uh, creates all the problems, but if technology is the solution, why isn't there fewer problems right now than when there was less technology? I don't know, I don't have the answer. I think I've just found it, find it as a very interesting question to ask. So if technology is, is the solution, <clears throat> why do we have any problems at all? What about socialism? So socialism is much more like a, it's, it's also about e econo economy, but it's also about um, our society as a whole. So socialism will most likely say, yeah, we need to do some regulations, we need to do some taxes, we need to do some incentives. Um, and the problem arises from liberalism and conservatism. So we need a revolution. Yeah, okay. So I don't think that they are really taking this problem seriously. Um, and they are thinking very much about us as human beings, what should we do, what should we change, um, how can we, we incentivize something. Let's look at veganism. So yeah, we know that we need some of the above, right? We can't continue firing coal plants, for example. We need new, greener energy, or green energy, greener energy, but we also need a change of mindset. So veganism is not about no, I should say, veganism is, is changing your perception on the world. Um, it's about realizing that we are not the center of the world. So all the other ideologies are egocentric, um, which basically means that they are about human beings. It's about our needs, it's about where we are going, it's about um, how we can thrive, how we can, how we can develop uh, ourselves. And I think veganism is much more about ecocentrism. So we know that we do have one planet. Okay? We know that we have one chance here on Earth. And when I say we, I don't say us as human beings, I say us as all Earthlings. All the animals, all the trees, all living beings. So it's, it's just a different perspective, it's a different worldview. So I believe that the first three ideologies, they are trying to argue with nature. So nature will do whatever it does and has done for millions of years, and we are trying to provide these short-term solutions with technology, with <clears throat> trying to ignore everything, with trying to do um, human regulations. Sorry, my voice is having a little bit of difficulties. <coughs> ah. Can't get rid of this sore throat. Maybe some beer tonight will do it. Um, and in veganism, we, we, we've come to realize that there is not nature and animals and human beings, 
there is one whole, there is one planet, and it's one big um, interlinked ecosystem. And we're just a part of that. And we cannot separate nature from human beings or human beings from nature. It doesn't make sense. It was, it was okay for many years. Um, we didn't see the problems that it caused, but now these problems are really in our face all the time. So we need this evolution of mindset. We need to uh, realize that human beings are not the most important thing in the world. Um, the sun and the moon and the planets does not revolve around human beings. It doesn't revolve around planet Earth. It's just, we're just a part of everything. And we need to take that into consideration whenever we do any kind of a decision. So, it's all about worldviews. And if you have an egocentric worldview, the most important thing is your own home, your own family. The next important thing is, all right, the market. What, how, what can I do in my home that I can sell to some city or some, some other uh, homes or people? The next thing would be your country or here it would be maybe the EU. And finally, somewhere out there, there is a, a world. Who really cares about that? What really matters is my world, which is my home, my family, my peers, the people with the same skin color, or even the same um, species, if you can say it that way. And where we need to go is we need an ecocentric view. These problems that we are facing with the climate, with environment, with the way that we treat animals, with our health, can only be solved by taking an ecocentric view. So we need to start looking at this from top down. I'm not saying we should throw out all the other pol political uh, ideologies. They are great at building houses and the schools and um, all of these things that we depend on as human beings to satisfy our needs. But our needs has created huge problems on this planet that we need to we need to face it and we need to solve it top down. So we need to implement this ecocentric uh, view as well as still having schools and kindergartens and hospitals and food production and all these uh, things that um, the old kind of politi polit political parties are very good at, at, at running. So, what is Vigana Patil doing in, in, uh, in terms of policy? Well, of course, you have all the obvious. We do care about the animals, we do care about human health, we do care about climate, we do care about the environment, and that's where we are focusing. So, I do get this question a lot of times, not that much anymore, but uh, in the beginning, I was asked, so, Michael, you want to fight for the animals, that's fine, but what about... Labor unions. What do you think about labor unions? I think they're great. So what should we change about them? I don't know. I'm not a politician. I'm an animal rights activist. Um, what about transport? What about new cars? What about disabled people? What about uh, these two walking people up there? They're immigrants. I didn't have a good icon for immigrants. What about the military? What about our school system? Uh, and, um, energy production? You know what? We do have excellent systems to fix that. We do have excellent politicians. All that stuff, it works, right? Revolution in regards of uh, labor unions or transport or how we treat disabled people. No, and that's why poli politics has become so boring. Because all that we argue about is, so should we have, um, should we have one uh, teacher in every class or should we have two or maybe one and a half? What should the size of the classroom be? All that boring stuff. There are excellent political parties to, to take care of that. Again, we need to start looking at these problems from a different perspective. That was what I was trying to say. So, do you agree with me that politics has become boring, uninteresting, annoying, something like that? Yeah. All right. So my view on that is, Today, every politician is ch chasing the people, okay? Because as I showed you earlier on, 
it's all about what are my ratings for the next election. And we all know, if we, want, if we have a product and we want to sell it, we want to know who are the consumers, what do they think, what will they react on. And then we design our product to fit the consumer's needs, right? And I think politicians now has become excellent marketeers. They're excellent salespeople. But the, fa the, the failure of politicians today is that by becoming excellent marketeers, they are chasing the people. So they are always running around after people, looking for the next thing that will make a great uh, rating improvement, right? What can I say that will make everybody happy and say, yes, I want Michael for president? Now the problem is, back in the old days and with the vegan party, we are saying something that nobody likes. But the thing is, we are not managers like politicians are today. We are trying to be leaders. We are trying to show the way, we are trying to show a new future, a new way of thinking, a new way of doing stuff. And we can only hope that people will follow. Of course, we do need to market our, our ideas, we need to do activism, we need to do speeches, we need to do all that stuff that politicians also do. But we can only hope that people will follow. Because we cannot design animal rights to be easily consumed, or uh, we cannot design our message so that everybody will just like it. We need to show the way, we need to lead the way, we need to pave the path so that people will see that it's a, it's a good idea, it's awesome, why not just stop killing all these animals? We can save the environment and our, and our health uh, on the way. Great, I'll join you guys, it's a good idea. So that's a major difference as well. But it's also our strength, because I think that by doing it this way, we will, be, we will actually be showing people what they lack in the current politi political system. I, I, I love a strong leader that stands up and says, I believe in this, I think we should go in this direction. I can join that leader for some time, maybe, some, maybe that guy or girl is an idiot and I'll try something else, but it's, most of the times it's fun, right? Somebody shows you, let's go this way, let's take this journey. All right, let's do it, let's try it out. But these guys over here that just tries to tell me what I want to hear, that's really boring. So yeah, the current political system, I think it needs to wake up. I think we need more leaders in politics. And um, yeah, I'm ready to be one. I'm ready to try it out. Because <laughs> And it, it's tough because my, I know my ideas and my uh, ideals and I know my vision for the future is not an easy one to grasp or to consume, but I'll try. So anyways, why now? And I, I'd like to talk about why now as not in the exact date, but why a vegan party? Well. If you have the people, they are being influenced all the time by the very soft vegan messages like Instagram cupcakes or cookbooks or going to McDonald's and see, hey, we have a vegan burger. Or somebody standing in the middle of the street like Cuba Truth or somebody going out there and um, um, modifying farm equipment. <clears throat> And I do believe that we need all of these kind of activism. We need everything, and we need all the stuff that isn't shown here. I believe that everybody sitting here in this room can do some kind of activism that is coming from your own heart and that will change the world. So no matter what it is, and I do believe that cupcakes on Instagram can change the world as well. But it can't do it alone, it needs all these other things as well. And one important thing is, um, if we only had in, uh, cup, Instagram cupcakes, um, nobody would, would be challenged in their views about other things. Or, what can I say? 
Um, I believe that if we only had Instagram cupcakes, that would be too extreme for most people. They would simply say, no, 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 I cannot eat a cupcake because it's vegan. Oh, somebody does that, right? But anyways, if we strengthen the spectrum of activism and widen it, I, th I view it as a rubber band. So if I take a rubber band here and I put a small piece of string in the middle and I, and I expand the, uh, the amount of activism, activism we do, this uh, string will actually move with the rubber band. Do you see what I mean? So I believe that even though you're a middle, middle ground, um, uh, non-vegan, you're like, yeah, I understand the cupcakes, yeah, I, I can eat a, a vegan burger at some point, but oh, those demonstrations, no way. The, m the more things we have in this specter of activism, the more acceptable uh, every kind of activism will be. So, one thing about activism in all of these different flavors is that they're trying to push bottom up to people, okay? So we're trying to reach individuals all the time and we're trying to change that perspective on veganism. And I saw, and Henrik saw, an opening that was, hey, can we do this top down? Can we go into where all the laws and the regulations and the, the major decisions concerning our, um, um, uh, our country, um, uh, the politics are being made. And yes, we can. I believe that we can, we can interfere at least with current politics and maybe in 2023, we'll actually be able to join uh, the Danish parliament and make a, a hell of a shitstorm. <laughs> We can bring veganism into Folketing, as it's called in Denmark, um, the Danish parliament. So, uh, a raise of hand here. Who has never heard of or been to a Cube of Truth? Nobody. All right. So, I was actually planning to do a small um, advertisement here about Cube of Truth because I do believe that all of these things down here is very, very important. But uh, just go there, have a good time. Yeah, now I remember. The reason why I wanted to do um, an advertisement for Cuba Truth is I don't think that cubing is the... I don't know. I should say I don't know. I don't know that, that cubing is the ba best way to create vegans. I don't know about that. But I do know that Cuba Truth is perhaps the best way of making activists. So I see Cuba Truth as an activist generator. People who go there like, yeah, I wanna, I've, I've gone vegan and nah, I, I want to talk to people, but I don't know how. When they come to one Cuba Truth, they will leave there as an activist. And most likely they will go to other kinds of activism as well that they would never have dreamt of, never. So that was my own gateway drug. I was sitting back home, I'd spent a year and a half just First of all, emptying my brain of carnism and filling it up with uh, veganism, brainwashing myself, and then I was like, yeah, I gotta, do, I gotta talk to somebody about this. Tried to talk to my family, didn't work. Miserable failure, I'll never do it again. Um, so I need to talk to someone about it. And I went there and I met these great vegans, and I met these great people as well who wanted to talk about it. Some are idiots, some don't wanna listen, but most actually do want to listen, they, do, they want to know why you're there. And another, a great thing for both Henrik and I, let's imagine that we never went to a Cuba Truth and we just decided we want to become politicians. Then it would have been really uphill because we would have failed miserably at every argument we would have about veganism. The thing is, going to a Cuba Truth you can fail as many times as you like because there will always be a new non-vegan coming by. So, don't be afraid. Have as many talks to uh, non-vegans as you want. There will always be a new one. <clears throat> um, the only thing that you should be worried about is... Um, so, let's say that there is a, sc a, sc a scoring rating from 0 to 100. When you reach 80, 90 or something, you'll most likely go vegan. So we want people to progress in this rating all the time. 
Now, the only thing you should be worried about is hitting people or shouting at them or spitting at them or something like that because <clears throat> that will most likely make them go lower on that rating, right? But even if you have a, well, not that good conversation, um, well, they will just stay at the same score. No worries. Maybe you progressed one point towards a 100, but it doesn't really matter, right? There will always be a new non-vegan. Sometimes you do get someone from 10 to 90 and they'll go vegan tomorrow. That's awesome. But use it as a foundation for training, training, and training. Now, we can do all the arguments now, Henrik and I, because we've been in hundreds of conversations with these ordinary people. So when we get into an argument with a politician or a statistician or a farmer or whatever, you know what? They may be clever in their field, but they know nothing about veganism. We have all the arguments, we've tried it all before. So cubing is an excellent way for you guys to become better activists and maybe politicians at some point. So, what do I want from this world? What, what, is, my, what is my goal? Actually, I might be a little bit of an egocentric because all that I fight for is for my little home. My family, myself. The only difference is that my little home is not made of a few boards and cement and stuff like that. Um, my little home, come on. There we go. My little home is a tiny grain of sand floating in space around a single star out of a billion stars. And I just want this home to be safe and sound for me and for all the other earthlings that live in my home. Thank you. <laughs>